Welcome friends to another r slash malicious compliance video. So I was checking my statistics and it turns out that only one of you guys aren't subscribed. So don't be that one holdout. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. And our first story of the day is by Fangor. I'm giving you useless information? Okay, enjoy your green hair. I used to sell pool and hot tub chemicals. A part of the job is testing customers pools and hot tub water to see what chemicals they needed. If you don't take care of your pool or check it often, you need a lot of chemicals to fix the mess you've made. Particularly if you use chlorine pucks. They generally have such a low pH level that it burns away at your heater coil and causes you to have copper in your water. Well, a couple years ago, a customer came up to me to test their pool water. It was a complete mess and it had a bunch of copper in it. This isn't the exact conversation because it was a while ago, but this is the main point. I say, yeah, the main issue is your pH is so low it's making your chlorine less effective and you have copper in your water. The customer says, yeah, just give me all the stuff I need to fix it. I go and grab all the chemicals he needs and put it on the counter. The customer says, how much is all this going to cost? I say around $250. They say, I'm not paying that much. Is all of this really necessary? I say, yes, you won't be able to hold chlorine and you need to get the copper out. If you oxidize copper with a shock, it's going to stain parts of your pool and can even tint your hair green if you have recently dyed blonde hair. The customer says, my daughter's having a pool party next weekend and I just want the pool to have chlorine for then. I say yes and you need all of this to make sure you're good to go. They say, can you just put everything away and only give me the chlorine? I say fine, I'm not going to argue, I don't work on commission. Fast forward a couple days and the customer's wife came in. It was subtle, but you could tell her hair had a funny tint to it. She asked for all the chemicals that I recommended to her husband, and she paid with zero hesitation. The husband never came in ever again, and his wife took care of the pool from that moment forward. The next time the wife came in, it looked like her hair had been dyed the original blonde color she used to have. Dang bro, your copper water kinda turned you a little punk rock there with your green hair. Be honest, if you have a pool, are you paying $250 right now up front to fix the water, or is it going to be a back burner thing? Let me know in the comments down below. Our next story is by Unlimited Patience. You don't want a woman working on your car? That's fine, but you're going to be waiting a long time. Many years ago, I worked at a car dealership. The attached service garage was small, and I was the only licensed mechanic. I would occasionally have issues with male customers. They would second guess my diagnosis, watch me while I worked on their cars from the bay door, double check my work in the parking lot, etc. I didn't deal with customers directly and would often get my apprentice to pull cars in and out of the shop for me. This morning in particular, we were busy. The lot jockey and apprentice were occupied helping wash cars for delivery and driving to a customer's house. The service advisor left a work order and keys at the parts counter and I went out the front through service to get the car. It was in for a service campaign, which was an update done with a scan tool. It takes about 10 minutes. The customer was complaining on waiting and was sitting in service. When he saw me with his keys in my hand, he immediately stood up, alarmed. I was hustling, so I walked right by him and out the door. I missed the following conversation, according to my service advisor, also female. The customer said, who's that chick? Is she going to be working on my car? I don't want her working on my car. Advisor said, the other tech's out at the moment, so it's going to be quite a wait until someone else can look at your car. He says, that's fine. I'll wait for a guy. I don't want that chick touching my car. Advisor politely said, understood. The advisor comes to let me know, and I pull the car out and put the work order and keys back on the counter, nonplussed. Half an hour passes, the apprentice is still away, and I'm happily working on something else, bringing other cars in and out. The customer is now watching each and every person who comes through the door. The high school co-op student comes in to get something signed. The customer's keys are still sitting on the desk. It's been about an hour now. Customer says, hey, why hasn't my car gone in yet? Can you get this guy to do it? Advisor says, no, sorry, he's just a co-op student, so he's not allowed to drive the cars due to liability and insurance concerns. The customer says, just get someone else to bring the car in and he can do the work. This was supposed to take 10 minutes. Advisor says, sorry sir, he's just a high school student doing his co-op. He's not approved to perform warranty work. Only licensed techs and apprentices can do the recall. The car jockey returns. The advisor hands the car jockey a different set of keys and he brings yet another car into the shop for me. The customer's being incensed. 
he says, I've been sitting here for over an hour and I've watched five cars go in before mine. My appointment was for 8am, this is getting ridiculous, blah blah blah. At this point he says that he literally doesn't care who does the recall, but that it has to be a guy. The service advisor starts listing off the names of the men who work in the dealership, then saying why they can't perform the recall. Well, there's Harmon, but he's just the car jockey. He doesn't know how to work on cars. Then there's G, but he's about 17. I wouldn't want him doing the recall personally. I guess we could ask Mike, but Mike's the parts guy. He doesn't know how to use the scan tool. The detailers are men, but they know nothing about cars. The customer is fuming at this point and demands to talk to the service manager. The manager comes out of the office and guides the customer into the garage. He's pretty old school, lights up a cigarette standing at the end of my bay and points at me. That's my best technician. Those guys take orders from her. You can either wait for her to finish what she's working on, and then you can ask if she's still willing to do your work, or you can take your car somewhere else. The guy was pretty shook up at this point, and he took his car and left, two hours after he'd first arrived. I don't think we ever saw him again, which wasn't much of a loss, all things considered. That manager in particular always stuck up for me and took my side. The service advisor had this very deadpan sense of humor. She knew full well it would easily be an hour before the apprentice would return from his errand and that no one else could do the recall. This wasn't the first sexist thing we had encountered. So if I took my car in for service and I noticed that a lady was going to do the repairs or the service job, you know what my reaction would be? It would be, oh cool, that's it. Or maybe my reaction would just be like, Hey, so how soon can I get this back? Because what does it matter? I would assume whoever's working as a mechanic at a car dealership knows what they're doing. Our next story is by Karova Synthamesk. So you want me to report my hourly work duties? Okay, let me show you why that's a waste of time. I had a horribly harsh, to the point of personal attack, manager in my previous job. She was incompetent, inefficient, and micromanaged the heck out of everyone. There reached a point in time where she wanted everyone to fill out an Excel schedule reporting on exactly what we did by the hour as she felt we were working too slow, when in fact most of the progress was held up by her. Several of my colleagues and I were the only people that had to do this. Everyone else just trusted their staff to finish the work, no matter how long it took you or how you distributed your tasks or time. So I did as I was told. At the end of every day, I would spend an hour filling out this Excel schedule in detail. And at the 5 to 6 p.m. block, I would write, filling out the work schedule. She got so mad at this, but she couldn't say anything to anyone further up. I guess she didn't want to seem incompetent or doing unnecessarily extra things just to feed her micromanage impulse. Plus, I was just doing as I was asked to. Eventually, word got out that I was doing my rightful duty. My colleagues started to follow, and eventually, our director found out. No one ever spoke to me about this, but the work schedule thing stopped soon after. You know what really isn't good for productivity? Expecting somebody to stop and tell you every little thing that they're doing. If you were brushing your teeth, you wouldn't want to, at the very end, be obligated to stop and go, I brushed my molars, I brushed my incisors, I brushed my front teeth. You would just trust that if you say you brushed your teeth, that means you brushed all of them that you were supposed to. Why redundantly waste time? Our next story is by Random Bloke. You want me to walk home? Fine, I will. Not sure if other people experience this or not, but when I was younger, around 10, I could be pretty annoying as most kids are sometimes. Anytime I acted up in the car, my mom would fall back on her favorite line, if you keep being annoying, you're walking home, and proceed to pull over to the curb, pretending to kick me out of the car. Mum was normally expecting me to poop myself and get back in line, as the thought of walking home far is pretty scary for a little kid. However, quite the contrary for me one day since I started sensing this was BS after a few times of hearing this. The woman wouldn't let me walk to school 500 meters from my house by myself, let alone kilometers away from the home. Anyway, at the sidewalk, I hop out of the back seat of the car with the biggest poop-eating grin and gave my mom a wave goodbye from outside the passenger window. My mom's face just had a look of disappointment, knowing full well she just lost that battle. She asked me to get back in straight away and said she wasn't being serious. However, I had other plans. I wasn't going to let her off that easy and decided I would start walking home for a bit to rub some salt in the wounds. Now what happened next was slightly unexpected, but 
Oh well. So I start speed walking thinking I was the funniest guy ever with my mom following right behind me. Well, some good Samaritan must have called the police because not too long into my victory walk home, a cop showed up. Now that I think about it, it may have just been a coincidence where a police car drove down the street as I'm pretty sure the police response time is far longer than a couple of minutes. They pull over and start questioning my mom, with me now crying, which didn't help matter since I thought I was in trouble. Hint, I was. It just wasn't a great situation at all since it pretty much looked pretty much like a soon-to-be abduction. After a bit of time and quite a few viewers watching on from their houses, the police figure out everything's fine and I hop back in the car. My mom looked at me and said a kid-friendly version of, you are freaked when we get home, and then silence for the rest of the ride. I proceeded to be grounded for a week, which was probably fair in hindsight. She never said it again after that day, which was an absolute win in my book since it really annoyed me. The moral of the story is don't pretend to drop your smart butt kid off at the curb when they act up in the car, you could have an interesting run in with the police. To be fair, I feel like if the cops did get a call where there's a potential abduction going on with a kid, their response time might be a little bit faster than usual. That said, I think parents in this situation are always setting themselves up for potential colossal failure. The thing is, they might be thinking that they're asking such a impossibly scary to answer question, but they're really just giving the kid a very big challenge, almost begging them to take on the challenge and prove them wrong. And our final story of the day is by Christopher Kaiba. You want to deal with a man? All right, so be it. Okay, so I run a smallish business with my mother, uncle, aunt, and occasionally brother and girlfriend. Fireworks, balloons, and various stuff and decorations for events, weddings, funerals, other businesses, etc, etc. Small town, not crazy busy, but not swatting flies out of boredom. So a guy walks in Monday, wants a huge balloon arch and some other designs, plus fireworks, plus some custom made stickers for the coming Sunday for his wedding. My mom greets him, I was at the bank at the time, and asks him to elaborate on what he needs. He gets all smug and demands to speak to the man who's usually at the store, me, because a woman wouldn't understand the complexity of the order. Mind you, my mother is literally the backbone of the entire business. She makes the balloon designs, sets them up nice and pretty, arranges them, the whole shebang. So she tells him to come back tomorrow, when I'll be in. I come back from the bank, she tells me the story and tells me to handle it, although she'd prefer if we didn't deal with the idiot at all. And so malicious compliance time. Monday goes by, Tuesday comes and I head to the shop. Dude walks in around 11am, my mom nudges me to let me know he's the guy. I start with the whole, hey welcome, what can we do for you, blah blah, and he starts telling me his complex order. I stop him, tell him I have to go to the bank, it's urgent, and he can tell my mom what he needs. She'll be more than able to help him. His face goes fully sour and asks when I'll be back. I tell him, in two to three hours, give or take. He can either wait for me or come back tomorrow. He waits for an hour or so and leaves. Comes back Wednesday morning, same story. I have to meet our supplier. I'll be out for two to three hours. He waits again for the second day in a row. Thursday comes around, he walks in again. This time I fully intend to listen to him, so I grab a pen and paper and I'm ready to take notes. He asks for three of our simplest balloon designs, and the cheap ones at that, in three different colors, some basic fireworks, and asks if we can be at the wedding to set it up with lights and fireworks. After a certain level, fireworks must be lit by professionals with specific licenses, us. So I look him dead in the eye and let him know that I have absolutely no idea how to help him, seeing as the balloons and fireworks are not my area of expertise, and he'll have to defer to my mother. His face turns pale. He begrudgingly tells her all the same things he just told me. She writes it down and lets him know that he'll be charged extra for the things he wants, because we should have been told on Monday, and now we're going to have to spend all night making it. So it's going to be an extra 40%. The price tag for all the stuff was around a thousand. He starts losing it, refusing to pay that much for the things and the service. Thing is, nobody else does what we do, at least not anywhere close, so my mother very kindly lets him know that if he had told her what he needed on Monday instead of waiting for me, he wouldn't have to pay the 40% extra. 
and if he wasn't going to book us on the spot, then the extra charge would climb as we would have even less time to fulfill his order. He obviously agrees because there was nothing else he could do, pays up and leaves. We went to the wedding, did our job, got paid, and he was probably pissed as all heck the entire time. I mean, that's just a colossal failure on all fronts from this guy. What does it matter with who is helping with the balloons and fireworks as long as they're accredited? Do you have your license? Yes, you do. Okay, here's what I want to do for the wedding. That should have been the end of it on Monday. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. So of all these stories I've read today, which is your favorite and why? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you haven't yet, if you could like and subscribe, that would mean a lot to me. Whatever you do, whether it's liking, subscribing, turning notifications on, all of it helps grow this channel and I appreciate the heck out of it. So until next time, I'll see you all tomorrow with some more stories.